Welcome to the Lock In Podcast. It's the show about how we live now. This is episode 25 for Wednesday, 16th of September 2020. My name's Conan Winnichon. I work for Black Knight, the Irish web hosting and domains company. Now, in general, we don't tend to talk about our own business on this. We've got another podcast for that. That's called the Black Knight Podcast, and I'll have news for you at the end of this show in relation to that. However, I must declare an interest in our next guest because she's a friend of the family here at Black Knight. Uh, Una Feely is one of the organisers of the Indie Cork Film Festival. Black Knight has sponsored that festival for five years now, and we're delighted to to do so again in 2020, especially delighted because in spite of the uh, restrictions and difficulties and challenges that this year has presented uh, for event organisers in Ireland and around the world, Indie Cork is going ahead. Una Feely, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Con. Delighted to talk to you today. Una, not only is Indy Cork going ahead, Indy Cork 2020, but it's going ahead in a physical fashion with bums on seats as well as an online dimension. Can you tell me how you're making this work? Well, um, we are somehow making it work all right, Con, um, and in no small part um, to the Gate Cinema in the centre of Cork City here who reopened at the end of June and have done so successfully. Um, we're so restricted, um, obviously, with social distancing and how cinemas must operate now. Um, but we're thrilled that we are going to have our usual eight days and eight nights at the Gate Cinema. And then, in addition to that, and thanks to Black Knight, we are able to create an online festival platform, which means that many of our films are going to be available online over the course of two weeks, the actual festival week and the week after it, up to the 18th of October. And that's a fantastic addition and new venture for the festival because without it, some people just simply wouldn't get to enjoy the festival. It's also a bit of an experiment to see who comes to the festival online, who wants to watch short films and documentaries and features. So we're very, very excited about that and a general sense of relief all around. That's fantastic. How will it work in in practice on the ground, uh, Una? There'll be a limited number of tickets available for screenings at the Gate Cinema. Is that right? That's right. There's um, 50 seats available for every show, and that's in a cinema that can hold 250. So the best way of thinking of it, I have found, is to realise that when you buy a ticket, you actually get 12 seats to yourself. Um, I've seen the diagram in the gate, so it's very, very socially distant. Mm. Um, But you can book for your group or you can book for two or three people in the same household. Mm. Um, So it's very, very well done. It's very clear. There's no confusion when you Mm. walk in. Everything's very easily marked out and, you know, the staff are very friendly. Um, You wear a mask going in, you take it off during the film itself. Um, So it's pretty much business as usual with lesser numbers and a lot of space to yourself. And you've you've added this online platform now so that the films will be available to, to screen online. Will they be on demand or will they be available at specific scheduled times for people to watch? They will be pretty much on demand. So um, basically you sign up to the site. Mm. Uh, you can pay as you go, go along. You can choose films and just decide like you would in the cinema. I'll, I'll pay my five euros for that. Mm. Go and see that. Or you can buy a pass which means that you can watch everything or you can buy a weekend pass or whatever. So we're trying to make it as user friendly as possible for people. We did quite a bit of research on the site as well, because a lot of the European festivals that we're very friendly with, say in March, April, May, June, they had found themselves having to go online very, very quickly. So we had the benefit, I suppose, of being able to attend those festivals and see how they did it. Mm -hmm. And even in this short period of time a lot of the platform providers have you know really advanced what it is they're offering uh, Mm. consumers in terms of you know it being user friendly easy to sign up and maximum amount of time that you have to view the films and so we're pretty pretty happy with it really very good and in terms of the festival experience that whole uh, mingling and talking to people and and discussing films and uh, uh, watching talks and interviews with filmmakers and things like that are you going to be able to share any of that online as well we are um we're we're going to be able to ask um some filmmakers to introduce their films online and we'll also be able to do some q and a's 
So people will have the benefit of being able to listen to that filmmaker. Um, some of those will be pre-recorded and some of them will do live mm. so that we try and repli replicate that kind of excitement, I suppose, when the filmmaker connects with the audience. Una, this is Black Knight's fifth year as a sponsor of, uh, of Indie Cork. It's been going a little longer than that, I know. How would you sum up what Indie Cork is all about? Well, I suppose we started the festival to try and show films um, that don't normally get, get screened, that are coming from the independent sector a lot of the time. Um, Ireland has moved on a lot in the last 10 years in terms of film production. Um, there's also like so many different outlets now for film distribution wise that a lot of films don't make it into distribution into your local mm. cinema. So really we're kind of offering the experience of discovering new films that don't otherwise get seen and supporting independent makers. Now we also do that with music. Mm. So we have a, a performance element to the festival um, which this year obviously will be slightly different and we're trying to move some of that online as well. So basically Indie Cork is about supporting that indie filmmaker and music maker. And obviously um, it's it's one aspect of it is to, to struggle to put on an event uh, given the challenges of the time we live in. But the time we live in or the times we live in, Una, are also, uh, I suppose, uh, they're also a, a material for, for filmmakers. They're also a, an inspiration or they're also a, a theme that needs to be responded to in a way. And uh, I noticed you guys were quick off the mark early on in the year uh, when you invited submissions for films made under lockdown conditions. That's right. And and actually, it's resulted in a fantastic programme that we're going to screen this year called uh, Homemade Lockdown Films. So basically, uh, we invited people at the start of the summer to start making their own short films at home mm -hmm. and that we would pick the best of those and screen them online. And uh, what happened, of course, is that outside of that competition, people started making films anyway worldwide. So we've got a really nice selection of very inventive, creative short films, mm -hmm. all made in lockdown conditions, which reflect the times and reflect how people felt about the whole experience. Some are funny, some are a bit more poignant. Um, but overall, it's a, it's a really lovely programme, I think. You were saying to me, Una, um, yesterday uh, there was a lot of press coverage of, of the launch of Indie Cork and uh, a lot of enthusiasm for it, uh, you were saying to me as well. Uh, I noticed there was a lot of very positive response to the, the articles in, in newspapers and, and uh, online media uh, over the last 24 hours. And in addition to that, you had said to me that I, I think this is one of the first uh, events or festivals going ahead in Cork City uh, since the real depths of the lockdown. Wh what do you think is the importance of, of uh, people being able to gather, albeit in a limited sense, and uh, celebrate their culture? I think it's really hugely important. Um, you know, the feedback we've been getting is that people are just hugely cheered up by the fact that Indie Cork is going ahead. They're going to be there. They're going to go and see films. It's an opportunity to get out and even glimpse friends and glimpse, I suppose, a bit of society that we took for granted before. And now people are very excited about the possibility. And mm. um, I know some people might prefer to stay home and watch the online platform and that's fine. But there's just a general sense of goodwill towards the festival this year. And I think, you know, joy that it's happening mm. and it's, it, it is the first fully fledged event that's happened in Cork City since lockdown. Some festivals have very bravely managed to get parts of their programme online or do some very small, very limited number of things. But this is the first sort of eight days, eight nights festival that's going ahead. And the response so far is amazing. Fantastic. Well, I think it's a, a tribute uh, to the work put in by you and the other organisers. Thanks very much for talking to us, Una. Whether people are participating in Indie Cork online or whether they're booking seats to, to turn up at the gate with the, that limited and socially distanced seating arrangement, uh, they'll need to book in advance, I presume. Where do they go? That's right. So if people would like to book tickets um, for the opening night film, which we just announced yesterday, which is Damien McCarthy's new feature film. It's, it'll be his world premiere, actually, a film called Caveat. That's now on sale at the Gate Cinema. So people just go to CorkCinemas.com. Mm. But for all other information, they can come to us at IndieCork.com. And we're just actually about to relaunch that site next week as well. So it will have the online platform 
and all the information people will need. That's absolutely fantastic, uh, Una. Um, that, of course, is a world premiere that you're opening with uh, on, on the opening night. Any other particular highlights people should know about? I think that uh, the shorts programmes this year are, are particularly interesting. Um, again, because some of the films are made in the last six months. Um, you just get, you know, every basically every subject you can think of is covered in them. They're from all over the world and it, they're really uh, films you will never see mm. again. So I, I always recommend the short film programmes. Fantastic. Well, Una, it's a pleasure uh, to talk to you. I don't think I'm going to make it to uh, Cork this year for Indie Cork, uh, but I, I will certainly pr- participate remotely as will many other people as well. Uh, congratulations to you, to Mick Hannigan and, and to everyone else involved in the team. And uh, Black Knight is delighted to be involved. Mashiv, well done. Great. Thank you, Colin. That's uh, Una Feely, one of the organisers of Indie Cork uh, Film Festival, which is going ahead from the 4th uh, of October. You can find out more information about that at IndieCork.com. Now, very briefly, I mentioned at the start of the show, the Black Knight podcast, which is our other more business focused podcast. It's been on a hiatus uh, while we focused on a very different lifestyle that we've been uh, living uh, for the past uh, six months or so. But we're bringing it back. It's going to resume next Next week, and we'll be talking about the brand new dot gay domain, uh, which Black Knight is delighted to be involved in. Uh, It has a community aspect to it as well. Uh, Both Black Knight and the dot gay registry will make uh, contributions to LGBT charities uh, in support of those uh, when people register a new dot gay name. There's lots more to talk about besides in relation to that. And you can find out more at blackknight.blog slash podcast. And that show will be uh, putting out next week, along with another episode of this show as well. We're busier than ever. Listen, thanks for talking to us. Good day to you, Dorella Sloan, August Benacht.